How to find the number of neutrons in a particle will depend on whether or not your teacher gives you the, the atomic mass of the particle exactly. The mass number, some teachers will call it. You'll know this is given because you'll see a symbol with the number written in the upper left-hand corner. And when I think about it, sometimes teachers will also write out the name of the element, bromine, dash, and then that mass. So bromine 81 is this Br atom with an 81 written in the upper left-hand corner. Now, this number in the upper left-hand corner, or after the hyphen written here, means you're given the mass number for the particle. Now, that number will not necessarily match what's called atomic mass on the periodic table here. This is going to be some decimal number, and it's an average across all of the BRs that we find all over the world. What is constant for all BRs is the atomic number 35, which is the number of protons. So the number of neutrons is going to be this mass number minus the atomic number from the periodic table. You look that one up and get that. Periodic table is the source of it. It is the number of protons. This number here, teachers are going to call the mass number of that particular atom or isotope. The mass number is protons and neutrons combined. You take away the number of protons and it gives you the number of neutrons that are in that particle. Bromine 81 has 46 neutrons. Let's try it for bromine 79, which you'll notice bromine always has 35 protons. It says so right here, but this particle weighs a little bit less. 79 minus the number of protons gives you the number of neutrons that are in that particle. The difference between bromine 81 and bromine 79 is the number of neutrons. That's what makes isotopes different. Now, if your teacher does not give you the, part, the particle's mass, if they don't say this is 81Br or bromine 81 or something along those lines, if they just say how many neutrons are in bromine, what your teacher's asking you to do is to assume that this mass is the actual mass of the particle. Now, you're supposed to round it to the nearest whole number. 79.9 becomes 80 in my world. Now, in the real world, there are no bromines that have an exact mass number of 80. They're actually all either 81 or 79, but you may not be there yet in your chemistry education. What matters to you is that if your teacher doesn't tell you what the mass is of that particular particle, You've got to use the mass from the periodic table and then subtract the atomic number also from the periodic table. Again, the 35 comes from the same place that that 35 came from. This is the atomic mass on the periodic table rounded. I don't like it when teachers do that, but teachers tend to at the beginning of a course because you don't yet know that, you know, atoms come in different flavors. This particular question would say that uh, bromine has 45 neutrons. That is impossible in the real world, but you don't necessarily know that unless you know that there's some bromine 81s in the world and some bromine 79s, and there's just enough of both that on average they have, eight, they weigh 80 each. So let's summarize. Number of neutrons is the mass number of the particle minus number of protons or atomic number. Subtract them to get number of neutrons. If your teacher doesn't give you the mass number of the particle, see, it just says BR, no 81s, no 79s, no clues. Round the mass from the periodic table to the nearest whole number, and then subtract the atomic mass. It's the same process for either, but there's a, an assumption you have to make if you're not given the mass number of the exact atom your teacher cares about. That, my friends, is how to find the number of neutrons. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.